I would absolutely love if you would subscribe to this channel. So click the little subscribe button and you will be notified of all of the rankings, interviews, recaps, and previews. Hey everyone, this is Jenny Martz and you're listening to Hallmark Happenings. Hi Jenny. Hi <laughs> thank Hi. you for being on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you talking with me. You've done a lot of stuff with Hallmark Channel and uh, we're going to get to all of that. But first off, I know you have a book that came out not too long ago, Rescuing Harmony Ranch. Can you just tell us all about that? Oh, gosh, sure. So Rescuing Harmony Ranch is a feel-good romance from Hallmark Publishing, and it is about a bearded blacksmith and a marketing exec. Uh, the premise, you know, is a, a matchmaking meddling grandma who uh, gets in a car accident and calls her granddaughter Jocelyn home to Harmony Creek which Harmony Creek Ranch is, or Harmony Ranch is a um, living history museum. So it's like everything is set up like it was back in the 1900s. And what's really fun about this book is that it's inspired by an actual living history museum that's right down the street from my house. So I live in Colorado Springs. So if anybody's been to Garden of the Gods, um, there's a little living history museum there. So the, the scene, the setting, the pond with the muskrats, the cow named Pumpkin, like those are real things that I see all the time when I walk down and walk through this little living history museum. So uh, Mac is the blacksmith, high school sweetheart. Um, they used to compete about everything and now they have to work together and he's kind of stuck in the past. He loves all the history and all the past stuff and she's totally future. She loves social media, like she's a marketing exec, so she's all about technology, and so they kind of have to figure out how to, like, you know, the past and the present collide, and they have to figure out how to work together to save the ranch, because grandma is in financial trouble, of course. Of course they do. It's Hallmark, and I don't think I'm going to give anything away to say there may just be a happy ending. I would imagine so with Hallmark. That's how we <laughs> like it, our happy endings. Yeah. And yes. I was going to ask you where your inspiration came from, but it sounds like you kind of told us a little bit about that. Were there any other things that like played into creating these characters? So I actually had um, pitched another book to Hallmark. It was just, I think it wasn't right at the time. They weren't really looking for cowboys at the time. I write a lot of Western romance. And um, I was actually walking through this Rockledge Ranch with this writer friend of mine. And I was like, I need to come up with another idea. And she's like, we're walking through a Hallmark movie right now. She's like, this is your inspiration. So that kind of started all of that. And there is a blacksmith there. He spent a couple of hours with me, um, showing me all the, you know, neat little ins and outs of blacksmithing and probably not all, you know, what two hours worth. And then I would say I love in all of my books, well, not all, but probably a lot of my books, you're going to find quirky, fun, sassy little old ladies. I was really close to my grandmas, both of them, and they both had just a little bit of spunk and a little bit of sass to them. And so I love writing little old ladies, um, you know, women that are older have so much wisdom to give and so much history, and so much advice, and they're so much fun, and so I love having fun, sassy little old ladies, so I would say Grandma Molly is probably a little bit um, of a combination of both my grandmas, which is kind of fun. I love that, the sassy, kind of like um, on Golden Girls, uh, Sophia, yeah. she, she's sassy, and have you seen Cedar Cove at all? I, yes, but I can't remember all the characters, Okay, but I well, love there, Debbie Maycomber. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Of course. Well, there's a, a lady who plays the grandmother of Andy McDowell's character and she's done two or three other Hallmark movies and her character is so quirky and sassy and brings so much to the role. And I think it sounds like this grandmother character in this definitely provides that humor. Yes. And I love that. I, I just, I love little old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm curious, is there a, is there a plan to turn this particular book into a movie? Have you, is there anything in the works? Can you say? I can say that it is still a possibility. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay, perfect. So we're still working on it. We're still working on it. Yeah. It sounds like it would be fantastic on the screen for Hallmark Channel. Who would you love? So 
yeah, I, anytime you have quirky grandmother and some, some Western flair in there, it's perfect. But, and the basset hound named Savage. I mean, how can you not like love this droopy, you know, there's a part where he's trying to chase after a cat and he just gets too tired halfway through chasing after the cat and just lays down on the oh I the love that. but his name is savage yes he's so cute are you familiar with Reed Drummond at all the pioneer oh yeah, woman? yeah yeah the pioneer woman oh yeah of course yeah yeah she has I think is her basset hound Charlie I think his name is Charlie <laughs> Oh, I love her too. Um, I don't know what her Basset Hound's name is. This one is named Savage, just because I think that's <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, you should look her up. She, her dog anyway, she has a book series for kids based off of her Basset Hound. And then she has like oh! if, in Walmart, she has like little cooking appliances and like timers literally with Basset yeah, Hounds. Yeah, yeah. So if you're, if you're fond of Basset Hounds, there you go. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out. I do have several of her things. So I'm going to have to check that out. You so were you going to ask me if I had inspiration of who I wanted to play my characters? You just took the words right out of my mouth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's where you were going. It's kind of funny. You guys can't see me, but my dog just walked in behind me. So I have a golden retriever and he just walked in and sat Aww. down right behind me. So oh, sweet. <laughs> um, you know, I would love for Chris Hemsworth, you know, to play Mac. <laughs> oh, He's my yeah. inspiration. <laughs> I don't know if he would be available for a Hallmark. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, they got Chad Michael Murray recently, so you never know. <laughs> yeah. And Chad Michael Murray is probably my second choice. So I could totally see him as Mac. Um, oh gosh. And I can't remember the gal who, um, oh, I can't remember the gal's name, a blonde gal that does a lot of Hallmark movies. So I love Pinterest. And if anyone checks me out on Pinterest, just under Jenny Mark. Um, I have a Pinterest board for every one of my books and it's kind of like all pictures that inspire me or what I think stuff in my books look like. So if you go look at my Rescue and Harmony Ranch Pinterest board, you can see like who I imagine. There's like just a big visual of exactly what I imagine Rescue and Harmony Ranch, the book would look like coming to life. That's neat. Like a visual element to kind of help you along and give you inspiration. Yep. I love that. And it sounds like there's definitely something in the works to get this to the screen for Hallmark channel. I'm sure everyone would absolutely love it. And I love whenever you can take a book and put it, put it into a movie that way everyone can do their comparing and their contrasting. Cross your fingers and message Hallmark and say, yes, I would love to see this as a movie. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and I, before we go any further, how can people purchase this book and read it and start giving even more support to getting this on the screen? So right now uh, it's at Target. So it's on the shelves at Target um, through July. Um, and I think the beginning part of August. So you can find it at Target. Um, you can find it on Amazon, obviously. You can find it on the Hallmark Channel website. You can find it on Nook. Anywhere books are sold, you can order it. Um, but if you want to go pick it up in person, it's at Target right now. Well, that's awesome. Target is a huge place to display your work. Congratulations. Yeah. And Barnes and Noble. I always like to give a, go into your bookstores, save our bookstores. Yes. Yeah, save the bookstores. Your characters sound fantastic and have so much like depth and like personality to them. And then you have the dog, but is there a moment that you really enjoy from this book that kind of stands out to you that you created? Um, yes. Uh, so it would be the scene at the lake. The dance at the lake is just my favorite. It's kind of the pinnacle of, and it originally was a first kiss and then it switched to a almost first kiss. So yeah, the part at the lake um, where they're dancing is just, slow dancing is just my favorite. Oh, that sounds so sweet. Well, I will definitely make sure people know that that is a moment they need to watch out for a sweet moment, yeah. the almost kiss. <laughs> yes. And can we talk about so many of, like you mentioned, your novels are kind of a cowboy Western theme. Where did that kind of stem from? Do you have like a family of, of ranchers or where, where does that inspiration come from? So, uh, I grew up on a farm in Kansas. So yes, my dad is a farmer and a veterinarian my parents got divorced. And so then I moved to Colorado 
So I have this kind of Kansas, Colorado thing. And then when my husband and I graduated from Colorado State University, we moved up to Montana and we lived in a little small town in Montana that was full of ranchers. And he worked for the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management and for ranchers. So I love small towns. I love the small town life. I grew up with this, um, you know, kind of sense of community. And I love that community. I love where the community comes together, where they take care of their own. Um, I love where everybody knows everybody. Um, I, in Montana, I worked in a bank and like by the fourth year, I was still considered the new girl. <laughs> and they're like four years, but I love that. And I love putting that in my books. So I oftentimes say that my stories are kind of small town stories with humor and heart, because that's what I love. I love that community community. I love sense of friendship. And so, yeah, I do have that kind of Kansas homegrown. My dad has, you know, his work cowboy boots and his church cowboy boots and his, you know, so yeah, I'd say I'd come by it honestly, rode horses growing up and had cows and chickens and pigs and all that. So I just love that life. So it's definitely authentic writing. You've experienced a lot of these things and you're not just like pulling it out of thin air off of Pinterest. This is stuff that you definitely are familiar with, which is great. Right. And so my one set of, so I have six different series, um, but my uh, hockey playing cowboy series, I was hockey mom. Uh, my kids played hockey. My husband played hockey. So I mixed my Cowboys of Credence series is a small town cowboys, but they also play hockey. So they have this kind of genre mashup and that series has kind of morphed into the Credence Horse Rescue. So there's a horse rescue series. Um, and I, the Hearts of Montana are also cowboys, but I also do a lot of romantic comedy. Um, and I have a cozy mystery series, which is seven books long. Oh my goodness. You've written so many things and so many stories. How did you start your relationship with Hallmark Publishing? So, oh gosh. Um, so yes, I have, I just finished writing my 29th book. Um, I turned it in last week and um, I have always loved Hallmark. You know, I've always loved Hallmark movies. Um, I love the idea behind it. I love the sweetness to it. Um, if, if you do love the sweet romance, I will say that my just give out a little warning that my Cowboys of Credence, the hockey playing Cowboys, they have a few naughty bits in them. So they're a little steamier. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. A warning, warning. If you yeah. just be prepared, I've used, I just had an interview with someone and I use the word steamy. So it's funny you mentioned that. So yes, more yeah. steaminess ahead. If you read there. those books. <laughs> yeah. Whereas the Hallmark and my cozy mysteries are much more um, sweet. They have much more sweet romance in them. Um, so back in the day when we actually could, you know, go out and go to conferences and meet people. And um, I, <laughs> I had a goal of, um, you know, writing for Hallmark and I had gone to a conference in Denver and my entire goal for the, for the whole conference was to find Stacey Donovan, my editor, and pitch a book to her. I'd already sent a book. I'd already pitched a proposal to her. Actually, that's kind of funny. Um, and it was a story about a guy and a gal. She was a mechanic and he was a chef and they inherited the same garage. And so my whole goal was to find her, track her down at this conference, right? And find a way to nonchalantly run into her and strike up a conversation and, and ask her about my book. Mm -hmm. I got lost one afternoon went, got on the wrong elevator to the wrong place in the convention center. She stepped on the elevator. Like oh it was goodness. so, That's isn't it? Like it was supposed to be. So I said, Hey, Stacy, you're my conference goal. Would you have just a minute to talk with me? And I told her, you know, Oh, I pitched this book to you. And she said, Oh, well right now our automatic no's are no female mechanics, no chefs and no inheritance stories. <laughs> oh my goodness so I was like okay well, what would be your you know your dream story what are you looking for right now we kind of concocted this idea for a romance writer um kind of a timid romance writer who meets who goes to Montana and meets um the real life hero in her book 
which actually that's the cowboy story that kind of they weren't looking for cowboys at the time and now they later they were looking for cowboys so i ended up selling that book later and that book comes out next year called cowboy ever after so it's kind of funny that that um, story did come out later but that's how i met her i literally like it was it was meant to be oh my goodness it sounds like it should be in a hallmark movie what a what a serendipitous event <laughs> yes well and it was always my goal to like be a movie star and so here's a little secret nobody tell this to anyone I'm like this is just between right like you and me and all of your followers <laughs> um, all of your listeners but I did write a couple of you know 50 year old you know characters into the story just in case I get to play in the movie they're little tiny characters <laughs> Jenny one, works in the gift shop. <laughs> one works um. in the gift shop and one's like the chili cook-off judge so just in case I get to have a little cameo appearance, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. You absolutely should. Well, you know, Penny Perry and Jackie Lind, I think are the big casting directors of Hallmark. So I will, I'll, I'll uh, sorry, my dog just yawned. Um, I'm going to tag them in this post when this uh, episode is up and say, here's a, a great person to consider. She knows a little <laughs> bit about the story too. So <laughs> perfect. Yes. And you know, there, there is something about this book that is somehow um, just really connecting with people. Um, you know, I, I'm just amazed and blessed and awed by the reviews that it's getting that, that people are just loving it. And, you know, there's 81% of five stars. Like it is just, I'm, I'm just blown away and really, um, pleased and honored and thrilled that people like it so much, but there is just something that they're connecting with in, in this book. So it's been really fun. And I, I think it would be a great, um, it would really come across on screen really well. And there's no, there isn't a, a Hallmark movie like this. I, I like that. I like the storyline and then your, your passion for it. And it sounds unique. I hope that it happens. And I'm so glad people are resonating with it and that it's getting all the ratings it's getting. That's amazing. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Oh, of course. Of course. Well, I would like to know since you do enjoy Hallmark channel, do you have a favorite Hallmark channel movie that you could just rewatch and rewatch? Oh gosh. Um, you know, um, I really love the mysteries. Oh, the, oh gosh. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it. What was the one that had um, the guy from 90210 and he was a cowboy, but he didn't know how to ride a horse. Oh, and he oh. came out to. Um, yes, I know. It was, oh, that was a good one. It, I can't believe I can't remember so, his name. So cute. Luke. Um, and Luke something. Luke Priestley. Is that what it is? You know what? I, I'm going to Google this because I know who you're talking about. He was in Riverdale, I think, that uh, popular TV show. I can't believe I can't yeah. think of his name. So, and he was like a cowboy and he got sent um, to film on the ranch, but he didn't even know how to ride a horse. And um, Luke Perry. Luke Perry. I knew it started with a P. Between the two of us, we got it. <laughs> yeah, that one was really cute. I love A Country Wedding. Um, that's such a cute... Um, Jesse Metcalf, I think is. Mm -hmm. And Autumn Reeser. I, I recommended that in my last interview I did. I recommended a country wedding. It's a good one though. It's great. I've seen it 10 times, yeah. I think. <laughs> and the old um, Mrs. Miracle, you know, the old um, Christmas ones. I just love some of those. And um, uh, yeah. Although speaking of Christmas books that I think should be a movie. Um, if you haven't read Christmas Charms by Terry Wilson, I really, oh my gosh, that was such a cute Hallmark book. And I just hope that they make it to an, into a movie. It's like a charm bracelet that all the little charms, oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. Oh, that sounds charming. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's so sweet. Well, um, no, great movie selections. Totally agree with you. I do love the one, like you mentioned, with Luke Perry. That was such a funny concept. And she was making like a loom. I don't know if you remember, like she had this giant like thing. She's making oh, yeah, a loom. She and did. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. What, what a unique thing for them to include in the movie. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of like mine with the, you know, the blacksmith. There's really not movies with the blacksmith. And he, you know, makes her a heart out of like he forges her a heart out of blacksmith, you know, steel or whatever. And he makes her a rose, 
like he forges her a, a, a steel rose um, from his blacksmith talents or whatever, which is kind of fun. He's a pretty, Mac Talbot's a pretty dang thoughtful, sweet, hunky, manly dude. <laughs> That's With great. a great beard. Oh, he has the beard. Well, then Tyler oh, Hines yeah. should play this character because he's like one of the few Hallmark actors that rocks the beard in the movies. <laughs> Yes, he is one of my choices too. Yes, he would be a good one for the beard. Well, it's funny. I feel like with Hallmark Channel, they make so many movies and they use a lot of the same occupations for their characters. And so a blacksmith would be something different that we have not seen before. I like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, give us something new. <laughs> yeah, brush your fingers. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Could you give some advice to aspiring authors who are like, oh my gosh, I want to do what you're doing. You're just so successful and talented. Oh gosh, thank you. Um, so my best advice um, is, uh, I guess, a couple of things. So writing as a career is a marathon, not a sprint. So nothing happens quickly in the publishing world. It all takes a long time. Writing a book takes a long time. Um, but perseverance does you know, you can persevere, um, but it does just know that you're in for the long haul. So hard, hardly anything happens quickly. Um, so marathon, not a sprint, uh, finish the book. So lots and lots of people want to be a writer. A lot of people start a book, but you got to finish the book. So finish the book. Um, and I would say go to where writers are. Um, if you are interested in being a writer and going down this path, find a writer's group in your town, um, in your community. There is writer's groups just everywhere. You would just be amazed. Um, and a lot of them are specific to your genre. Um, and be among writers and go to writer conferences. That's where you're going to meet editors and um, agents and you can pitch in person. And having that in-person networking, just getting to know people and um, seeing what other people do and learning and practicing. Um, so always keep learning, finish the book, go to conferences, surround yourself with other writers and, mm -hmm. and write, you know, just keep writing. And maybe if you go to a conference, you'll end up on an elevator with your future editor. Right? <laughs> you <laughs> never right. know. <laughs> That's right. Um, well, that is fantastic advice. Um, and like you said, you've got to see it through and finish your book because no one will know about it if you don't finish it. And you mentioned a minute ago that you submitted, I guess, a manuscript that's completed last week. Do you have anything else in the works or can you give any details on that? Oh, sure. So what I did last week was um, I write this Cowboys of Credence, the Credence Horse Rescue series that I'm in now. And my newest book in that series actually is When a Cowboy Loves a Woman. And oh gosh, this story is um, heart wrenching, heartwarming, and heartbreaking. It's two widows, so it's you know the hero and or I guess a widow and a widower. The hero and the heroine have both lost someone. the The hero is a veterinarian with this adorable ten year old girl, um, Mandy, and she's just this funky little Spitfire, just cute as heck and his wife died of breast cancer. And then Elle, um, her husband died um, in a car accident several years before. And she has a heart of gold. And these the book opens with a kitchen fire where her kitchen is on fire and he kind of comes in and saves her from the fire. And that's what kind of brings them together. The fun thing about the horse rescue series is it's they don't just rescue horses. There is a honorary goat named Otis that is always getting into trouble. There is a fashion conscious pig who thinks she's a dog. Oh. And um, her name is Tiny. And there is a mini horse named Seamus who is constantly getting out of his cage and getting into trouble. And there's all these different animals. Um, the horse rescue series starts with the cowboy state of mind all these different animals just find their way. So in When a Cowboy Loves a Woman, the newest book, there's a horse that loves to be sung to, which is really, and is particularly um, partial to Elvis tunes. So, oh so I gosh. just really, this book is really, really close to my heart. And then the new, the next one in that series is How to Cowboy, and it comes out in December. 
Um, and uh, then the one I just turned in is Never Enough Cowboy. And it's the next, the fourth one in that series. You are, I'm sorry, you are <laughs> a busy lady. My dog is chewing on my microphone or my, oh. my <laughs> stereo, or what are these called? The earphones, the headset, <laughs> earphones, the cord, he's eating it. So speaking of ornery oh. animals, I think he could yes. make an appearance in one of your books. One. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, and the next, the next Hallmark book that's coming out next June, next summer is called Cowboy Ever After. And it has a pudgy um, corgi named Gladys. Oh, Gladys. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so cute. And she's just the cutest and a golden retriever. And I can't think of the golden retriever's name right now. You have so many animal characters. I don't yeah, know how you keep all your characters said, straight. Like, <laughs> 29 books. And, but I love bringing the same animals back. Like I really have a great time um, bringing the same animals like back to show up again. So. Oh, that's so sweet. It just brings such like a unique quality to your books. I love it. Now I want people to be able to follow you and keep up with everything you're doing. Uh, where can people follow you on social media? What's your website and everything like that? So my website is jennymarks.com. Um, M-A-R-T-S with an S, not a Z, um, jennymarks.com. And you can find me on Facebook at uh, Jenny Marks Books. Um, you can find me on Twitter. My handle is um, originally enough at Jenny Marks. <laughs> um, it's a great I one. Think, you might as well use it. Yeah, right. I think on Instagram, I'm at Jenny Marks writer. So I have a reader group. Um, my, my cozy mysteries um, are called the page turners. That's the name of their, it's a book club who search for clues and ro romance while eating really great desserts. Mm -hmm. And it's the seven women in or five women in a book club. And every book in the series follows a different woman in her romance and her mystery. And so the page turners were my first, you know, my first series. So that's my reader group It's Jenny's page turners. Um, so if you are interested in checking out my reader group, um, Jenny's page turners is out there as well. And that's kind of my street team. And they're just a great um, group of gals. There might be some men in there, group of people. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and I think that's probably where you can find me. Oh my goodness. I can't believe you keep coming up with new storylines, new characters for 30 books almost now. That's crazy. Uh, you are a talented lady. Oh, well, thank you so much. And I guess the Hallmark Channel, you can go to the Hallmark Channel website under books and you can find me and find me somehow through there too, I think. Oh, yes, absolutely. I will include all of these links in the show notes so people can follow. I, before we finish up, have you seen the Hallmark movie? It came out in 2014 called um, Perfect on Paper with Morgan Fairchild. No. You, is she, um, she's an author and she writes romance novels. And then uh, Lindsay Hartley, I think is her name. She was a soap star back in the early 2000s and she's a book editor. So she has to edit her books. Then it's, it's really cute. It's a very cute one. Oh, cute. Awesome. I will add it to my list. Oh, yes. I think you would love it since you are in perfect the field paper, of writing. I'm writing it down right now. Yeah, I, I think it's perfect on paper. I'm almost 100% sure. I think it's okay. only one Morgan Fairchild's done, but she's great in it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll check it out. There you go. Perfect. It has been so great chatting with you. Thank you for telling us everything about everything you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. I always have I love connecting with readers. I love connecting um, with just the Hallmark audience and people that love books and love stories and love reading about romance and falling in love and cute animals. And those are my people. Oh, I, I can't think of anything better than romance and fun animals. It's just the perfect right? combination. <laughs> and you have infinite stories about both. So it's perfect. Good. <laughs> Oh, well, you've been such a delight. I really appreciate you talking with me. Uh, thank you again. And congratulations on the book. Yeah. Well, if you read it, let me know what you think. And if it really lived up to all the expectations. Oh yes. I love reading books. I just, I don't have as much time as I'd like to. I try to like at nighttime before I go to sleep, but this will absolutely be my next one to pick up and I will read it. I think it's 99 cents on Kindle right now. Oh my goodness. That's not bad at all. <laughs> yeah. It was supposed to switch a couple days ago. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it still is, but it has been this last week. So there's a possibility that it might still be 99 cents. So might as well there that's, you can't buy anything for 99 cents anymore. So you might as well read a great book for 99 cents. <laughs> right. 
Oh yeah. Well, Betsy, thank you so, so much. And I'm glad that we, our connection all worked out. That was just such a funny thing. Well, have an awesome rest of your day and thank you again. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you love all things up TV, Hallmark channel, GAC family, basically all of your made for TV movie channels, click that subscribe button. So you don't miss out on any of the previews, the recaps, or the interviews until next time. Thank you so much for listening to Hallmark happenings. Have a great day.